I'm Bob Harris, president of the Decorative Concrete Institute. You know, several years back, I had a student ask, what's the latest and the greatest? Where is the industry going? And I remember that conversation, letting that student know that polished concrete was the next big wave. And I got to tell you, polished concrete is here to stay. Now, there's certainly a wide variety of different uh, manufacturers that make quality equipment. And these are two examples of some of the machines that we use here. Um, the way polished concrete works is basically it's a series of diamond tooling. In this case, we have a metal bond 40 grit diamond, and you do all of your coarse cutting or your coarse grinding first, and then you step up from the 40, you go to the 80, and there are certain chemicals that you use during the process, like densifiers, for example. But then once you reach a certain grit, what we do is we switch over to a different uh, type of diamond, and this is called a resin bond diamond. And what that means is the diamond is suspended in a resin matrix, whereas on the equipment here, we have a diamond that's suspended in a metal matrix. So this is more for coarse grinding. This is kind of a unique system um, on this large machine. This is a four-headed machine, as you can see, one, two, three, four. And you'll notice that while these spin a certain direction, the main plate spins the opposite direction. So this is kind of a unique machine. Also, this manufacturer has what we call a quick release for their diamonds. So basically, the diamonds pop right off, and so they're easy to, to uh, change in and out. For smaller projects, you can use uh, the smaller grinder. Now, these pieces of equipment are wonderful, not only for polishing concrete, but also for preparing the surface for epoxy coatings, for cement-based toppings. Um, so they're wonderful for preparatory reasons as well. You need to take into account the power requirements for equipment like this. The smaller machine, in this case, requires 220 single phase power. And what does that mean? If you're doing someone's home, for example, you could go to their breaker box, and most of your dryer and washer outlets is, in fact, 220 single phase. So you could hot wire into the breaker box. The bigger machine requires three phase power, typically around 483 phase power. That's a, that's a lot of power to run this, uh, this big piece of equipment right here. And so if you're out on a job site, typically what we'll do is we'll rent uh, a generator, 45 kW kilowatt generator at a minimum to run all of the equipment. Remember, to get the most out of your tools, use them properly and more importantly, use them safely. I'm Bob Harris.